Hey everybody, this is the unofficial start of our No More Fools Day uh, Western Wall Candidate Fundraiser. We got a long, long way to go, but I wanted to start early because we have special guests, right? We're going to talk about CFARS with Kelly Lane and Brian Ramirez. I didn't know Brian was going to join us, but it's cool that he is because he's also a, a Bernie TV volunteer, right? He followed us for a long time. He's in our Slack. I didn't even realize that he was part of the uh, Revolt Against Plutocracy, but we've got Brian and Kelly with us right now. Hi, everybody there. I see you all be waiting. Hi, Oz and, and Darcy. I got to look over here because I got this, you know, I got to have it set up for stuff. But right now, welcome, Kelly and Brian. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, thank you guys for creating. Uh, I'll be honest, and Brian, you might know, but when I heard, heard about CFAR, I was like, that's just, uh, and I was being an old guy about it. But you have a lot of people signed up. We're going to talk about that. Kelly, you first. Tell us what CFAR is. CFAR is a contract for American renewal, and it is brought to you by Revolt Against Plutocracy. And most people will know that by Bernie or Bust. They yeah. were the org responsible for Bernie or Bust. Uh, I joined after that, but I was a huge supporter of Bernie or Bust. I must have been one of the most prolific tweeters with that hashtag. Um, so I joined with, uh, with them afterwards, and this is a strategy for the midterms. And it's really saying the same thing in, in a lot of ways that uh, are the same strategy that Bernie or Buss did, which is that we won't settle for a candidate that says they're going to do things and doesn't follow through. So the contract is basically, a, it's about 80% of Bernie's uh, platform. But each item on there is supported by the majority of Americans. So I'll often hear things like this contract doesn't go far enough in this way or that way, you know, from various progressive groups usually. Sure. And we have to kind of, you know, explain it and say, well, but this this isn't a a left agenda. It, it tends to lean left, but it is a populist agenda. So right. every item on there had to be poll tested. Um, at the time when I joined, two of the items weren't there, and that was the one uh, about uh, bringing in a, a special uh, prosecutor in all cases of uh, fatal use of armaments of police officers. So I really pushed hard for that one. I thought that was really important that we have something there. And actually, I don't think that goes far enough, but it's something. It's a start. And um, I also pushed really, really hard for election integrity, which is now the second one on the list. So, right, I so think these are these are things critical. on the list. But what does it do? Right. I mean, so I understand it's Bernie's list of things. And that's really cool. And I agree with you. And I've seen this in the Democratic Party platform where people want to go down so granular. And you're like, look, we got to kind of leave it where we can get everybody involved. Mm -hmm. So what does it do? Well, it is basically a promise to the voters. Uh, you can look at back in history and see that, you know, contracts worked. I believe it was Newt Gingrich's uh, contract. Brian, help me out here. I'm forgetting the name exactly. Um, it was in the 90s. I think it was just Contract for America. I remember and something they, like that. Holy cow. Yeah, this was kind of before I was really paying attention to politics me much. Too. But, um, it, you know, they swept the House and uh, elected a lot of Republicans. And, you know, Grover Norquist had a pledge right. that, you know, for no new taxes. So it's basically just kind of an alert to these candidates. Like we've got um, we've got activists that are paying attention. If you, you know, if you're elected and you don't follow through on these items, we're, you're going to be unelected the next time. So it's basically just kind of a, a check and balance. Like you don't get to just say like, you know, we've heard this from, you know, the unity commission, all these things that, Oh, we're, you know, we're progressive. We're going to do and, and people don't believe it. And so this is just a promise. Um, it actually is not legally binding. Unfortunately. Okay. All right, I was just about That's, to ask that, and I want to switch yeah. swap that over to Brian and go there. So I've been misspeaking. I thought it was I thought it was an attempt at a legally binding contract or some way that you can go no, after the, the politician with the law. Am I? Uh, so what is it then, really, Brian? It's it's a means of leverage. Is is what it is. It's it's basically the same leverage we used, the same kind of leverage that we used during Bernie or Bust. You know, we we told the 
attack Hillary, but if you do that, we're not going to support her and you're going to end up with Trump. So this is this is basically the same thing. We've got also a list of voters who have signed on to the pledge, and they're basically saying with their pledge that they're not going to vote for anybody unless they are a CFAR candidate. So what we can do is we can go to the candidates and say, look, you know, you can either get with this pledge and, and support it and adopt these policies, or we're going to run against you and you're going to end up losing. So this is basically the way this works. Is it's, it's a mean, a means of leverage. Interesting. So I did not realize that citizens could also sign on to that. That's that's pretty cool. So you, you're basically letting your uh, letting them know, hey, this is this is what, where we're at. This is what's going to happen. Um, it's not legally binding. That's that's but it's it's interesting that you mentioned. I didn't realize that that it was similar to the same kind of contracts that Newt and the Republicans had had in the past. So um, how many candidates have you had signed on to this? It, it seems like a lot, actually. I believe it. We're in 48. Close to 50. There may be a couple more in the works right now. So Wow, that's awesome. And, and uh, Kelly, continue with that. Where, where can people go to see this information? Where, where is the website? You can go to CFAR, CFAR2018.us, and there you can see the list of candidates, and you can also see where to sign on if you'd like to become an activist. We have weekly meetings um, that we invite activists to to get involved and find out what you can do in your community. You know, find a candidate where you live and ask them to sign CFAR. That's awesome. Um, one last question for you guys. Are you finding that this is being signed by uh, more than just uh, Democrats? Do you have, well, is it cross, is it cross parties, you know, or we got Greens, we got Independents, do you have any Republicans that have signed on besides maybe Sam Ronan? Sam Ronan. <laughs> we have one Republican, Sam Ronan, who, you know, as you know, was not Republican before, but um yeah, we have we do have mostly Democrats. We have a lot of Greens too, and a couple of Independents. I personally would like to see more Independents sign on. Um, you know, we have half the country is now identifying as Independent, and this the CFAR contract is you know a broad agenda, and I think that it appeals to most people. So. I agree. I agree. It's it's uh, it's unfortunate that we have to ask for a contract because you would think the I'm going to be a public servant and do my job would be the contract. Right. But in this day and age, it's like an extra seal of approval. Right. Right. And even though it's not legally binding and we do get that question a lot, it's just that extra step to let the politicians know, like, we we're and let the honestly in the, the democratic party know that if you just you know what what reason do they have to ever really help get a progressive elected if they just know that all of us supporting this progressive will just fall in line when they lose and vote for the corporate dem it's never going to change so that's what this is really about is is that leverage there to change that and it i mean it happened in 2016 we I saw it coming. I think a lot of us did that, you know, even though the media was and the, the polls were saying Hillary was so far ahead, you know, I saw North Carolina and Pennsylvania, you know, wallpapered with Trump signs. Um, I think it was pretty clear. And um, it's unfortunate that Bernie didn't win. But That's this so is funny. a progressive contract to move forward with with new progressive candidates. And um, we hope if you're interested in becoming an activist, please do sign on and, and really hound, tweet at your, at your representatives, you know, go out and ask people to sign it. Well, I love it. Thank you guys for coming up with it or continuing, really, because it's the continuation of the Burn Your Bust movement, as you said. Uh, it's, it's at Burn Your Bust on, uh, on Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. the, right. Yes. And and, uh, and we've got candidates signing on. I think it's fantastic. I think we need to hold them to a higher standard than obviously what they hold themselves to in office. So uh, mm -hmm. thank you both for pushing forward the initiative. It's really hard to start something like that and get it moving. And obviously you've managed to get the ball rolling on it, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, Brian, and, uh, go, ahead. Oh. go ahead. I just wanted to say one other thing. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty hardcore. Like I, I just want to say that I want to see Democrats sign on that are people like Tim Canova that I don't know how many people know now, I guess it's become more widely known that 
there was some election funny stuff that's going yeah. on. It's been proven yet, but except ballots were destroyed 12 months before sure. they were supposed to be. So I think that you know, we want to see Democrats sign on that are going to fight against the, the corp- corporatocracy, basically, and, and represent the people. Absolutely. And Tim, we've had Tim on the program several times. We're friends with Tim, and I didn't know that he hadn't said, Tim, come on, sign it. I'll send you a tweet. We'll, we'll get that take easy. You, t- you already do all the stuff. All yeah. Right. Oh, he's, yes, he's yeah. signed. He has signed. Oh, he has signed. Yes. Oh, well. I actually had a like great Tim chat Pinole. with him and Lulu Freistat. If you haven't talked to her, you really should. She is a documentary filmmaker, and she is helping Tim with his case. Great. Great. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe we'll have her on our next fundraiser. Appreciate you guys being on. We've got to get out of here and get ready for our first guest. It'll be Dorothy Gasquet from Washington. But thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks for having us. You bet.